We now have a nasheed by Brother Farshad. Farshad, sorry. Sallu ala Muhammad wa anna. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا يا بالغاسم محمد يا أبا الحسن يا أمير المؤمنين يا علي ابن أبي حجت الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفنا وتوسلنا بك وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها عند الله اشفى لنا عند اشفالنا ناد علی یاد علی دستم و امداد علی باد به من داد علی بر دلم و افتاد علی هل امروز زمیر در میخان توی هل فریاد رس این دل دیوان توی کعبه یک سنگ نشانی است که راه گم نشود تا بدانند همه صاحب این خان توی مست علی مست علی دائم و پی دست علی دست علی دست خدا چشم منو دست علی دوش دیدم که ملائک در میخان زنن همه با ذکر علی همه گی مست علی گل آدم به سرشتند و به پیمان زدن همه با اسم علی همه سر مست علی با من راه نشین باده مستان زدن همه با یاد علی همه پا بست علی قرعه فال به نام من دیوان زدن همه با عشق علی همه با دست علی راه علی ماه علی راه علی ماه علی دل بر دل خواه علی یار علی دلدار علی 
زهن ایوان نجف باز مرا راه بده در تواف حرمت فرصت دیدار بده ای نسیم سهرارم گیار کجا وقت مرگم نفسی مهلت دیدار بده ناد علی یاد علی دستم و امداد علی باده به من داد علی در دلم افتاد علی دوش وقت سهر از قص نجاتم دادم و اندران ظلمت شب آب حیاتم دادن باد از دام تجلی صفاتم دادن مستحق بودم و اینها به ذکاتم دادن عمر من تی شده در راه تو یا علی با حسین و حسن و زینب و زهرای علی مست علی مست علی دائم و پی وست علی دست علی دست خداست چشم من و دست علی راه علی ماه علی راه علی ماه علی دل بر دل خواه علی یار علی دلدار علی هیدر کرار علی هیدر کرار علی هیدر کرار علی هیدر کرار علی صلو علی محمد و آل محمد سنت سنت اللهم صل على محمد و آل محمد I know that Hadi's already given you an introduction and a welcome and everything, but I'll take this opportunity also on my own behalf to welcome everybody here this evening on such a beautiful occasion. It is, as always, a pleasure and honor and a privilege to host everybody here this evening, uh, whether you're here in person or whether you're joining us virtually through Facebook or YouTube. Uh, inshallah, you enjoy the program that our volunteers have worked very hard to put together and those people who have made an, made an effort to come out and have taken that opportunity, thank you very much for doing so and supporting the center and uh, the programs that we run here. Um, now, Hadi mentioned that I have a few words. I definitely don't have a few words. Uh, these are the words of the Holy Prophet of Islam, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salawat. Uh, you know, there's a lot of bad things and difficult things and problems going on in the world, but tonight is a celebration. Let's, uh, inshallah, we send uh, our heartfelt congratulations and best wishes to the Holy Prophet of Islam with a genuine, loud, uh, warm salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad It must be the masks that everybody's wearing that uh, uh, you, all your voices are so muted. Um, but inshallah, getting back to the, to the subject itself, this, uh, this is part of the sermon of the Holy Prophet of Islam delivered on, um, on the 18th of Dhul-Hajjah uh, at Ghadir Akum. And uh, by request of Sheikh Mansour, we're going to go through parts of this. So uh, please, uh, it is, it is, it's a brilliant, superb sermon. And it is both, um, it's engaging, it's deep, and it's, um, 
it will take some of my and your concentration as well. So inshallah, we, for a few minutes, please uh, bear with me being up here before we introduce Sheikh Mansur. And we'll listen to this uh, portion of the sermon that the Holy Prophet delivered in uh, appointing, not only appointing his successor, but also completing the religion that he was sent to complete, inshallah. Uh, with your support and with the salawat, inshallah, we'll begin. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Selected parts from the sermon of the Holy Prophet of Islam, sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, delivered on the 18th, 18th of Dhul Hajjah, 10th after Hijrah, uh, at Ghadirakum. All praises you to Allah, who is exalted in His unity, near in His uniqueness, sublime in His authority, magnanimous in His dominance. His knowledge encompasses everything. He subdues all creation through His might and evidence. He is ever praised. He is ever glorified. He is the originator of life and the one who returns the life to the deceased bodies. And to him, every matter returns. Allah is the creator of everything. He dominates with his power, the earth and the heavens. Holy and glorified is he, the Lord of the angels and of the spirit. His, his favors overwhelm whatever he creates. And he is the mighty over whatever he initiates. He observes all eyes while no eye can observe him. He is generous, clement, patient. His mercy encompasses everything, and so is his giving. He never rushes his revenge, nor does he hasten the retribution they deserve. He comprehends what the hearts conceal and what the con consciences hide. No inner thought can be concealed from him, nor does he confuse one with another. He encompasses everything, dominates everything. He subdues everything. Nothing is like him. He initiates the creation from nothing. He is everlasting, living, sustaining in the truth. There is no deity but he, the omnipotent, the all-wise. He is greater than can be conceived by visions, while he conceives all visions, the most courteous, well acquainted with all things. None can describe him by seeing him, nor can anyone find out how he is, be it by his intellect or by a spoken word, except through what he, the Almighty, has described of himself. I testify that he is Allah, the one who has filled time with his holiness, the one whose light overwhelms eternity whose effects his will without consulting anyone. There is no partner with him in his decisions, nor is he assisted in running his affairs. You notice how the Holy Prophet is establishing the platform of uh, and reintroducing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us and saying, this is, who we are, uh, this is who we are in praise of. This is who we are following. This is, inshallah, who we uh, can claim to be uh, servants of, inshallah. He shaped what he made without following a pre-existing model. And he created whatever he created without receiving help from anyone. Nor did doing so exhaust him, nor frustrated his designs. He created, and so it was. And he initiated, and so it became visible. So he is Allah, the one and only God, the one who does whatever he, extreme, whatever he does extremely well. He is the just one who never oppresses, the most holy to whom all affairs return. I further testify, and this is important when, uh, when the Holy Prophet of Islam says, I further testify that he is Allah before whom everything is humbled, to whose greatness everything is humiliated, and to whose dignity everything submits. He is the king of every domain, and the one who places planets in their orbits. He controls the movements of the sun and of the moon, each circles till a certain time. He makes the night follow the day and the day follow the night, seeking it incessantly. He splits the spine of every stubborn tyrant and annihilates every mighty devil. Never has there been any opponent opposing him 
nor appear assisting him. He is independent. He never begets, nor is he begotten. And none can ever be his equal. That's very important when we look at the distinction between other religions and Islam, especially Christianity and Islam, where there is absolutely no doubt in Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never was begotten, nor did he beget, which means that it's essentially negating not only the concept of uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Trinity in Christianity, but also other concepts as well. He is one God, the glorified Lord. His will is done. His word is the law. He knows, so he takes account. He causes death and he gives life. He makes some poor and others rich. He causes some to smile and others to cry. He brings some nearer to him while distancing him, while distancing others from him. He withholds and he gives. The domain belongs to him and so is all the praise. In his hand is all goodness and he is mighty over all things. SubhanAllah, that is so much depth right there. He makes the night enter into the day and, and the day into the night. There is no deity but he, the sublime, the oft forgiving. He responds to the supplication. He gives generously. He computes the breaths. He is the Lord of the jinn and of mankind, the one whom nothing confuses him, nor is he annoyed by those who cry for his help. Ya Allah. Nor is he fed up by those who persist. He safeguards the righteous against sinning. He enables the winners to win. He is the master of the faithful, the Lord of the worlds who deserves the appreciation of all those he created and to be praised at all times. I praise him and I always thank him for the ease he brings me and for the constriction in hardship and in prosperity. And I believe in him, in his angels, in his books and messages. I listen to his command and I obey, and I initiate the doing of whatever pleases him. And I submit to his decree, hoping to acquire obedience to him and fear of his penalty. For he is Allah against whose designs nobody should feel secure, nor should anyone ever fear his oppression. I testify even against my own soul for his servitude, and I bear witness that he is my Lord. I convey what he reveals to me, being cautious lest I should not do it. So a catastrophe from him would befall upon me. One which none can keep away, no matter how great his design may be and how sincere his friendship. There is no God but he, for he has informed me that if I do not convey what he has just revealed to me in honor of uh, of Ali in truth, I will not have conveyed his message at all. And he, the praised and the exalted one, has guaranteed for me to protect me the e from the evil people. And he is Allah, the one who suffices, the sublime. And he has just revealed to me the following verse. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. O messenger, convey what has just been revealed to you with regard to Ali. And if you do not do so, you will not have conveyed his message at all. And Allah shall pro protect you from the evil people. Surely Allah will not guide the unbelieving people. Uh, this is a quote from the Quran, uh, surah number five, uh, verse 67, ayah 67. Continuing on with the sermon. O people, I have not committed any shortcoming in conveying what Allah Almighty revealed to me, and I am now giving, going to explain to you the reason behind the revelation of this verse. Three times did Gabriel command me on behalf of the peace, my Lord, who is the source of all peace, to thus make a stand in order to inform everyone, black and white, that Ali ibn Abi Talib is my brother, Wasi, and successor over my nation, and the Imam after me. The one whose status to me is like that of Aaron to Moses, except there will be no prophet after me. 
and he is your master next only to Allah and to his messenger. And Allah has already revealed to me the same in one of the fixed verses of his book saying, your master is Allah and his messenger and those who believe, those who keep up pray and prayers and, pray and pay zakat while they bow down. Quran, surah number five, ayah 55. And Ali ibn Abi Talib is the one who keeps up prayers, who pays zakat while he bowed down who seeks the pleasure of Allah, the sublime, the almighty at all times. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I asked Gabriel to excuse me from having to convey such a message to you. O oh people, due to my knowledge that the pious are few while the hypocrites are many, and due to those who will blame me, and due to the trickery of those who ridicule Islam, and whom Allah described in his book as saying with their tongues contrarily to what, their, what, to what their hearts concealed. Think lightly of it while it is with Allah magnanimous and due to the abundance of their harm to me, so much so that they call me ears and claimed that I am so because of being so much in his Ali's company, always welcoming him, loving him and being so much pleased with him until Allah the exalted and the sublime one revealed in this regard the verse saying, and there are some of them who harm the feelings of the prophet and say, he is an ear, that is, the, he always listens to Ali. Say, he listens to what is best for you. He believes in Allah, has faith in the believers and is a mercy to those of you who believe. But those who hurt Allah's messenger will have a painful torment. Had I wished to name those who, who have called me so, I would have called them by their names and I would have pointed them out. I would have singled them out and called them by what they really are, but I, but Allah, dealt with them honorably. After all, Allah is not pleased with me un unless I convey what he has just revealed to me in honor of Ali, O oh, messenger, convey what has just been revealed to you with regard to Ali. And if you do not do so, you will not have conveyed his message at all. And Allah shall protect you from evil people. O oh, people, comprehend the implications of what I have just said. And again, do comprehend it. And be further informed that Allah has appointed him, Ali, as your master and imam, obligating the, the Muhajirun and the Ansar and those who follow them in goodness to obey him. And so must everyone who lives in the desert or in the city, who is a non-Arab or an Arab, who is a free man or a slave, who is young or old, who is black or white. And so should everyone who believes in his unity. His decree shall be carried out. His Ali's word is binding. His command is obligating. Cursed whoever opposes him. Blessed with mercy whoever follows him and believes in him. For Allah has already forgiven him and forgiven him, whoever listens to him and obeys him. Ya Allah, inshallah, we are of those people. Oh Allah, this is the last stand I make in such a situation. So, listen and obey. Sorry, let me, let me start that again. O oh, people, this is the last stand I make in such a situation. So, listen and, listen and obey. And submit to the command of Allah, your Lord. For Allah, the exalted and the sublime, he is your master and Lord. Then next to him is his messenger and prophet, who is now addressing you. And then after me is Ali, your master and imam, according to the command of Allah, your Lord. Then the imams from among my progeny, his offspring, till the day you meet Allah and his messenger. Nothing is permissible except what is deemed by Allah, his messenger, and them, the imams. And nothing is prohibitive except what is deemed so by Allah his messenger, and them, the imams. Allah, the exalted and the sublime one, 
has made me acquainted with what is permissible and what, what is prohibited. And I have conveyed to him, Ali, what my Lord has taught me of his book, of what he decrees as permissible or as prohibitive. SubhanAllah, the Holy Prophet has made clear to the people that whatever Allah has decreed to the Holy Prophet and taught the Holy Prophet, he has passed that knowledge and the decree over to Imam Ali alayhi salam and made it clear that it, it is Imam Ali alayhi salam who is the appointed leader after the Holy Prophet, subhanAllah. Then the Prophet patted Imam Ali's arm, lifting, it, lifting him up and saying, O oh people, who has more rights over, the, over you than yourselves? They said, Allah and his messenger. Then the prophet said, lo and behold, whoever I am his master, then this Ali is his master. Oh Allah, befriend whoever befriends him and show en enmity to whoever shows enmity to him and help whoever helps him and forsake whoever forsakes him. Oh people, Say what brings you the pleasure of Allah. For if you and all the people of the earth disbelieve, it will not harm Allah in the least. O oh Lord, forgive the believers through what I have conveyed. And let your wrath des des descend upon those who deny, the disbelievers. And all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad wa ala Subhanallah, that's only, that's only part of the sermon that the Prophet delivered and it's such powerful words. It's, uh, it's, it's really humbling to have the opportunity to convey, uh, reconvey those words to uh, our brothers and sisters here and those who are watching. Uh, inshallah, um, you can easily find the entire sermon uh, in so many places online and I would really recommend everybody to read the entire sermon in case you haven't and if, if you already have that inshallah it's a fan what an amazing reminder it is for us that this is the last uh public and official uh speech or announcement that the holy prophet of islam made before his passing uh and inshallah with that uh uh with this very crudely delivered uh, uh recitation of part of the sermon if you would join with me in reciting three salawat and welcoming Sheikh Mansur al Gai for the main speech for this evening. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajah. <coughs> Thank you very much, Wajali. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وطبيب نفوسنا وحبيب غلوبنا أبي القاسم محمد الله عليه وآله وسلم لا سيما بقية الله روحي وأرواح العالمين لمقدمه الفداء الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية أمير المؤمنين الحمد لله الذي جعل كمال دينه وتمام نعمته بولاية أمير المؤمنين والأئمة المعصومين عليهم السلام ولايتي لأمير النحل تكفيني 
عند الممات وتغسيلي وتكفيني وطينتي عجنت وطينتي عجنت من قبل تكويني بحب حيدر كيف النار تكويني تكويني سلامات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, my dear sister Rebecca also joining us. Congratulations to all of you on behalf of all of us. Inshallah, we convey our sincere congratulations to Sahib al Asr wa Zaman on auspicious occasions we are celebrating tonight. On the one hand, we had yesterday the birth anniversary of the 10th Imam of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, Imam Ali al Naqi al Hadi alayhi salam. And on the other hand, inshallah, according to the local calendar, Sunday will be the anniversary of the greatest Eid of Eid al-Ghadir. And Brother Hadi, who maybe for that reason, inshallah, for all the reasons, is mashallah, I'm seeing it because of the birth of Imam Hadi, alayhi salam. My Karbala of a road traveler, I was so happy to see him, alhamdulillah, on the stage and, and uh, I'm seeing it. When he said the birth of Imam Ali, alayhi salam, he meant the spiritual birth, uh, meaning the celebration of uh, Eid al-Ghadir. Jazakallah khaira, Sayyid Muhammad, mashallah, beautiful recitation of Quran, really very touching. Brother Farshad, although his uh, poetry was very short, but alhamdulillah, so beautiful. Jazakallah khaira. But really the cream of the program of tonight definitely was part of the sermon of the Holy Prophet that mashallah, brilliantly, Hajali, although I had sent it to him in the last minute, but mashallah, he recited it and read it so well. Very, very touching. I'm sure like myself, really, when he was reading it, uh, I was getting emotional, really. And I said to myself, subhanAllah, look at this. The whole, of course, for us is, is well understood and accepted and acknowledged. But just as a reminder that the Holy Prophet was unlettered. This is a sermon of supposedly an unlettered person. Do you see how eloquent with our very poor and immediate uh, translation even? And that sermon that Hajali recited, as he said it, is not even a quarter of the, the whole sermon of the Holy Prophet on the occasion of Eid al-Ghadir. In the old days when I was a kid, it was a custom in, in Iran, at least, that it was so common for the reciters to memorize the whole sermon in Arabic, off by heart, come stand and recite it. Some I still remember in the house of one of the very eminent scholars, Rahmatullah Alai, may God elevate his soul. I, was, I remember I was a kid and taken with my dad and a poet, a reciter was reciting over from my memory over 200 verses of a poetry that the whole sermon of the Holy Prophet was made into a poetry in Persian, in Farsi. And that poet was recited, the reciter was presenting it in front of that, that alim, that scholar, off by heart. Inshallah, let's make it from this year uh, a custom also here that in the program of Eid al-Ghadir, inshallah, next year, I said to myself, I wish we have spent more time to give for recitation and listening to the sermon of the Prophet rather than to me or, or with all or respect anyone else. Inshallah, we will add this. And as Haji Ali mentioned, it is definitely very recommended, inshallah, to refer to it. My topic for tonight, and lest I forget first, I want to invite you all to, again, although Hadi mentioned about it, it is my obligation to mention earlier today, unfortunately, I was informed that the very dear brother, Marhum Haj Yasser uh, Zoghaib, passed away, rahmatullah alai, after uh, combating and fighting a, a, a disease for, for a while, I, um, I remember. Also, a few days ago, we had that uh, tragic disaster in the uh, Beirut port. Inshallah, for the pleasure of all the souls lost in, in that incident and the pleasure of the soul of Marhum Haj Yasser Zoghaib that I made intention, inshallah, dedicating uh, this humble presentation to his soul and all those innocent souls lost and all the Marhumin, if I may invite you to please 
بسائر سورة الفاتحة مع الصلوات على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الحمد لله رب العالمين إن شاء الله the topic for tonight is just to zoom in and highlight only a few words of that brilliant sermon of the Holy Prophet of Islam as you heard of it so the topic inshallah is something that will benefit us so that when you go home and we have a task to perform following the instructions and the, and the teaching of the holy prophet of islam and of course coming from the holy quran the topic is about aqdal ukhuwa or muakhat a fraternity contract that is one of the recommendations to be done on the day of ghadir khum Sunday will be, and it's good that we are talking about it so that inshallah you are prepared. Friends between themselves, inshallah on Sunday, they can make this uh, contract. Husband and wife, as I will explain it, they can make this contract again between themselves, members of the community, and as a community at large, as recommended, we want to make it. So inshallah, as I'm presenting it, I have this intention for all of you, and inshallah it goes bilateral uh, contract and mutual contract. So it is one of the mustahab, but what is the mustahab? This mustahab, as I will explain, the historical background of it was introduced by the Holy Prophet of Islam while Muslims were in absolute minority in Mecca. Inshallah, we'll come back to that and explain it. And since then, it became a custom and a sunnah, the lifestyle of the Holy Prophet. And remember, Imam Jafar Sadiq, alayhi salam, the Imam says that, I don't like you to die unless you have practiced some, as many as possible, of the lifestyle, of the tradition, of the sunnah, of the, of the Holy Prophet. And if this is definitely one of them that has individual benefit for us and benefits as part of the community. With this aqd al-mu'akhat, the contract of fraternity, what happens is that once we make this contract, inshallah, two individual brothers, although they are not biologically brothers, but they become brothers in faith. And hence we refer to each other as brother and to the sisters as sisters. Two sisters who make this contract, they become bi not biological sisters, they become sisters in faith and in Iman. And as a community, as inshallah, I will tell you, and the, the reference for that, once the community at a whole, as a whole, has made this contract among themselves, we are expected not just for formality to call each other brother and sister. We should really mean it. A brother who is conscious of the topic for tonight, next time, and inshallah before, when he's talking to a sister in Islam and says, sister Fulan, he means that you are like my sister. As I want to respect and I respect my sister, as I will not have a lustful look, as I will not have a lustful look or indecent communication with my sister, nor would I allow anyone to have this kind of communication with my biological sister, I treat you like my sister. Brother, when I call you a brother, says a sister, I treat you respectfully as I res the respect that I give to my brother. Hence, members of the community become like a family, as I usually refer to it. At the end of the day, we are part of the Adam's family. Inshallah, here are the uh, members of the, uh, uh, the community of the faithful and the believers. Now, once we make this contract of all the rights and responsibilities that we have upon each other, by this contract, we forfeit all the responsibilities that inshallah I will mention according to Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, the Imam says that you have up to 30 rights over each other. So difficult to meet, so difficult really to truly say that he's my brother in Islam, she's my sister in Islam. So many obligations will come upon us. By this contract, I said, look, out of let's say 30 responsibilities and rights that I have upon you, responsibilities that you have, and vice versa, I forfeit 27 of them except three. Remember these three, the least that we are expected to treat each other with. Number one is that please don't deprive me of praying for me. Is it costing you much? When you raise your hand to pray, 
remember me to pray for me as I remember you by this contract to pray for you and include you in my dua as well. Second, visitation, ziyara, as much as possible. Virtually, really, depending on circumstances, don't abandon me, don't cut your relation with me, as inshallah, I'm not going to cut my relation with you. And third and most important uh, right that I have upon you by this contract, you would have upon me by this contract, is that inshallah, if I make it to go to paradise before you, and I am given the right to intercede, I promise you by this contract that I will intercede you to enter to paradise as well. Likewise, if you make it to paradise before me and you are given the right of intercession and shafa'a, please, you, by this contract, you have promised me to intercede me to enter and be admitted into the paradise as well. That's what I say that this contract can be made between husband and wife. Tighten your relation, inshallah, on Sunday by this contract of fraternity. The background. Now, what is the historical background to that? As far as the history has recorded, while Muslims were a minority residing in Mecca, under the severe torture and pressure of the infidels of Quraysh, the Holy Prophet وسلم, wanted to make Muslims become a small community. I will come back to that. And therefore, he announces Aqdil Mu'akhat. He said, brothers, sisters, mu'mineen, believers, let everyone make a brother in Islam, sister, every sister make a sister in Islam, and care about each other like siblings, care for, it, for one another. Hamza Sayyid al-Shuhada at that time before uh, Imam Hussein and before the story of Kabbalah, Hamza, for example, the Holy Prophet made a fraternity contract between Hamza and Zayd, the step uh, son of the Holy Prophet. And then at that time, historians have mentioned numerous narrations such, uh, suggest and support this, that the Holy Prophet, like, uh, uh, what do you call it, slapping the palms together, uh, shaking hand with Amir al muminin Ali alayhi salam, and says, Anta akhi fid dunya wal akhira. And made that fraternity contract between himself and Amir al muminin salamullah Time continued until Muslims, they came to Medina. As soon as they arrived, imagine the situation. We have some citizens of Medina, residents of Medina who embrace Islam. And we have some Muslims in Mecca under the severe pressure of the Quraysh, the infidels of Quraysh. Now they were forced to leave their homelands, empty handed. They left their, uh, their farms, they left their homes and, and nothing, penniless. They just fled from Mecca to seek refuge to Medina. Now imagine that numbers of family, Rawayat says that about 45 families of Muslims from Mecca, they migrated or sought refuge to Medina. Before them, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as you know, was residing in, in Medina. So they have come to a new country, to a new land, jobless, Homeless, what are we, what are we going to do? The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, again, he made an announcement. And he said, Ta'aw khaw fillah akhawain akhawain. Brothers, every resident, every citizen of Sydney, I'm paraphrasing it so that you understand. Every citizen of Sydney, Muslim community, you have an obligation. Your brother and sisters and brothers, they have come from Mecca. Now these people are homeless. Let every family accommodate one migrant family. Let every person share his business with every migrant. And as such, Muhajirin and Ansar became brothers and sisters in Islam. And that fraternity was made between them. You understand, but just for the sake of, I don't want to say dummies, just to, to make it clear, when we say the, the Aqd al muakhad and brotherhood, contract or fraternity contract, this has got nothing to do with the gender. And that's why to make it more uh, gender neutral, I'm using fraternity. And instead, if you insist, I have another term that I'll come soon to it, that has nothing to do with the gender. So in early days of arrival of the Muslims from Mecca, that fraternity contract was made and some they became brothers to each other. Again, 
علامه طب... علامه م... اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد علامه اميني رحمه الله علیه این الغدیر has listed about 50 sources from the Shia and Sunni mainly from the Sunni sources that they have mentioned this history that again the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made the fraternity contract عقد المؤاخات between himself and Imam Ali alayhi salam and that famous saying that you heard it from the sermon of the Prophet was repeated in it as well again that the Prophet says anta akhi fi dunya wal akhira you are ya Ali my brother in dunya and in the hereafter this is about the nearness of Imam Ali and then the, the Holy Prophet takes it further and says anta minni bi manzilat Haruna mi Musa you are to me like the relation between Aaron and Moses Except Allah and Nahula Nabiya Ba'di. As you know, Harun and Moses both were appointed by the Almighty God as prophets. The Holy Prophet says, You enjoy all the positions that Harun, Harun enjoyed, except the prophecy. You are not a prophet. Less than that, you are, you, are like, you are like a prophet without being a prophet. Your relation to me is so close as the relation of Harun to, to Moses. All right. Further down, if you say salawat for me to refresh my, my breath, inshallah, I'll take you further down. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajwa. Further down, this is now one year before the demise of the Holy Prophet of Islam, in the year nine after the migration of the Holy Prophet, Surah al Hujurat, that is chapter 49 of the Quran, was revealed. One of the ayat of the surah is ayah number 10. Remember, surah 49, surah al-Hujurat, ayah number 10. In which the Almighty God takes the community. Now it's the community. No longer two, two, between two individuals. The Almighty God calls upon the whole Muslim people around in Medina and says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ فَأَسْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ إِنَّمَا Literally, we use it in Arabic language when we want to express something exclusively. That the Almighty God says the relation between members of the Muslim community is the relation of the siblings, like your brothers and sisters to each other. Remember the meaning of أَخَوَى fraternity, I told you that is gender-free. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ and now the Almighty God refers to them as community. Come, pay attention, visualize the word in your mind, community. Community, it means members of a society that they, because of what they have in common, they are united. And therefore come unity together. If the Shia community in Sydney if the Shia community worldwide, if the Muslim community worldwide are not united, they are not the community. There is no community unless they are united together. In Christianity, we have tens, if not hundreds, if not few thousands of denominations. Two famous denominations that you have it in Sydney as well, and I have been in the interface uh, programs with them. One is called Uniting Church, Another one is called United Church. Do you know the difference? Once I asked one of the priests who in, in Marrickville, I said, are you the same as the United Church? He says, no, we are different. So what's the difference? He said, United Church, doors are closed. Stand clear. Already we are united. We, it's just like membership is finished. Uniting Church, it means that we are united, but our doors are open still. By all means, you can join. And hence, we call ourselves Uniting Church. All right? Go to Peter Street. You see the major one. Now, Muslim communities expected, number one, to be united further, to be uniting, so that we can accommodate every time any new face comes. Hala, hala, hala. Ahlan wa sahlan. Join us. And doors are open because the doors of the mercy of God are always open. The doors of the mercy and, and the doors of Islam are always open. As a community, now, unless we are united under the umbrella of faith and Iman, nothing can truly bring people together. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe in Surah Al-Anfal, if I'm not mistaken, I remember the ayah, but you find the reference. The Almighty God says, Lo anfaqta ma fil ardi jami'an ma allafta bayna qulubihim. If you had to spend the whole wealth of the world to bring people together so that wholeheartedly they are together, you will not succeed. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has brought them together, has made them one community. Why did the Prophet do that? Why did the Prophet make Muslims residing in Medina as the true meaning of a community? Not just a society living together, community, they are all united as one body. One, and I'll tell you, this is what I want to deliver, inshallah, from the message of the Holy Prophet. Obviously, the first immediate thing that comes to mind is that, yes, as I told you, that Muhajirun, the migrants, they were penniless and homeless. Somebody had to sacrifice and accommodate them. Imagine if you and I were in that situation. How many of us would be really, truly a Muslim to say that, okay, I can accommodate one family and my business, I share it, my farm, I share it with, with one person. Whatever we make, we make it together, but the 50-50, we, we have it. But more importantly, the Holy Prophet wanted Muslims to learn, you know, because the Muslim community at that time, Muslims, they were also coming from different backgrounds. We had Persians like Salman, we had Soheb who was raised in Rome, we had Bilal from, from Africa. The Holy Prophet wanted to deliver this message then and now and forever, that once you are part of this community, there is no privilege ranking caste system based on your skin color, based on your race, whether you're Arab or non-Arab. Your skin color means nothing in the eyes of God. Your racial background means nothing in the eyes of God. Your, I don't know, citizenship in today's language, na language nationality means nothing in the eyes of God. Your degrees that you hold means nothing in the eyes of God. Whether you wear a turban or not means nothing in the eyes of God. So what, what does it mean? What, what matters to God? What is real that in this world and the next will benefit me? In the community, in the mankind community, whoever is more pious is dearer and nearer and more honorable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the real privilege. And in fact, those who are pious, they don't ever see any privilege for themselves. They are usually down to earth. They never expect any, any respect from anyone at all. This is sign of piety. If someone is demanding respect, this is in fact a sign of impiety, an impious action. So this is something, and now this is in theory, subhanAllah, I wish, I don't have time, I just touch on it and move on because I want to bring it to the incident of, uh, of uh, Beirut as well. The Imams of Ahlul Bayt salam, and that is why we, we are proudly following them. And we say that there's no imam to follow infallible imam other than the imams of Ahlul Bayt. Brothers, out of 12 imams of Ahlul Bayt, salam, seven imams, how many? Seven imams, deliberately, they married who? And the, the wives of those imams, the, the next imam are what? Seven imams, their mothers, they were female slaves. Oh, I thought there is no slavery after Islam. No, there was. But Islam eradicated the slavery in a very wise way. One of the ways was this. Slaves, males or females, were those who were taken as prisoners of war during the war. So you can imagine they are the enemies used to fight you. Now they are arrested. And they are part of the prisoners of war. Used to be brought to the Muslim community. Imams of Ahlul Bayt al musalam because they wanted to teach practically. This is a very strong message. Boys, girls, parents, so far as you and I, we think that, okay, my son has to marry only a Lebanese girl because he's Lebanese. My daughter has to marry only an Iraqi girl, a guy because she's Iraqi. And or an Iranian only for Iranian. So far as we think nationalistically, racially, we are not true Muslims. Rest assured with that. Rest assured with that. This is the basic teachings of Islam. Imams of Ahlul Bayt salam, to get rid of this idol of caste system, racial system, not today in 2020, 
back 1400 years ago, you see that Imam, for example, Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam to start with is the first who marries a female slave. In those days, for an imam who is coming from the noblest member of the community. I'm, I mean, I'm, forgive me for the example even that I give you. I give you this example so that kind of you grasp it. Imagine someone from the royal family, top, the toppest member of the royal family is marrying who? In those days, uh, in those days, unfortunately, women meant nothing. Once a, a guy dies, his wife would be inherited with the rest of his furniture. She would be treated like a furniture shamefully. This is the time of Jahiliyyah, pre-Islamic era. Let alone if she was even a female slave, subhuman, complete subhuman. Someone, the noblest member of the community, Imam al-Baqir breaks that idol and marries a female slave. And the Imam says that, so what, she's from Africa. So what, she's from America. So what, she's from Middle East. These mean nothing geographical. Your, your accident of birth means nothing in the eyes of God. I married her. In fact, the king of the town blames Imam al-Baqir says, Aqa, so many noble ladies from Quraysh, Arabs, they, they can, they, they, they die to be, they love to be your, your wife. Why did you choose this black female slave? The Imam says, Inna akramakum atqakum. This is the community that Islam wanted to make. And Imams of Allah, bayt in practice, they made it. Continues. So from the time of Imam Sadiq, his mother was a female slave, continues all the way to Sahib al Asr was Zaban, as you know the story. Imam al Hadi, السلام, his mother is a female slave. His wife was a female slave. About his mother, the Imam says that my, my mother was Arifa. Yani she was not Arab, but what, what, what's the big deal about Arab or non Arab? What, 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 what is this? She was an Arifa. You read the rest of it coming from Imam al Hadi. السلام. Imam al Hadi, with regards to his wife, her name is Salil. Salil literally it means pure. Okay, the Imam was asked, Aga, why you called you changed the name of your wife to Salil? Imam Hadi salam, says that because the Almighty God has purified her from impurity. Allahu Akbar, that's a very strong statement coming from Imam Hadi salam. and she is coming from where from Maghrib, from Morocco. She was a black female, was taken in the, in the middle of the war at that time that Muslims were conquering. The mom says that she's such a pure lady. That is the reason that I chose her. And she deserves to be the mother of the next Imam. Imams of Ahlul Bayt often were forced to marry other ladies as well. Some were Arab, some were the daughter of the king, like the daughter of uh, Ma'mun. Allahu Akbar, think about it, read between the lines. Never from any of them, the offspring of Imams of Ma'asumin continued. All right. So that was one to make us all as one community. Don't make it Khoje versus non Khoje, Iranian make it a versus non Iranian, Arabs versus non Arabs. Imam Hussein Islamic Center, by the grace of God, from day one that was established, was meant and had this policy of being established as an Islamic center, not Iranian center not Arabic center, not Islamic center. Make sure we maintain it as Alhamdulillah you maintain it. Already the presentation of tonight gave me the impression, Alhamdulillah you are maintaining it. Members with different background getting together under the umbrella of the love of Ahlul Bayt Alaihi If you say Salawat, I share with you to reinforce it inshallah again. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad wa anjil farajah. It's an authentic hadith I share with you from the book of Al-Kafi. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam made a trip or was forced to go to Basra or Hira. Hira was a small town, uh, ancient town, would be around today's Najaf, uh, Najaf al-Ashraf in Iraq. Imam went to the house of one of the Shia members of the community. As they were sitting talking and the mom made inquiries about the community and the rest of the Shia community over there and made some inquiries about certain individuals. The host turns and on and says that, Yabna Rasulallah, no, no, don't ask me about them. We are not associating with them. They are different from us. Look at the answer of Imam Sadiq Today would be the answer of Imam Zaman. Imam Sadiq says, 
get our Luna? Do they love us? He said, yeah, of course. They are Shia. They, they love you. But they don't believe in what we believe. I'm paraphrasing it. Like maybe they follow different marja. Maybe their political views are different from us. And etc. They must say, aha. So according to your principle, I should not have come tonight to your house. Because also there is so much that I believe and I know that you cannot fathom, man. So if we are allowed to only communicate with people who are in our level of faith and understanding politically, jurisprudentially, marja'iyya and the, the like, then Imam says that then I should not uh, associate it with you. I should not have come to your house because of the levels of the wilayat and tuhid that I know. Abu Dhar and Salman, both of them were the companions of the Prophet. But the level of the Iman and the knowledge of Salman was way beyond Abu Dhar's to the extent that the Prophet said that he would have killed Salman had he known what Salman believes. So Imam says, what kind of mentality is this? Associate with one another. Division, rest assured, is from shaitan. Islamic centers, I always wish, and God is my witness, those who know me from day one, back in 1994, 95, we tried to make Supreme Council of Islamic com Shia communities. Also that community, Shia community, to say the least. I'm talking about the community of the believers, but the least, at least all Islamic centers, so far as it's my center versus your center. We are idolaters. We are caught in the idol of social so, societal idols. This center, that center, all are serving, all are celebrating, all are inshallah serving the Almighty God. Be united as a community that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam wants. The best proof is that Rahmatullah alayhi Imam Khomeini used to say, if today hypothetically speaking, hundred twenty four thousand prophets that they were serving different communities, supposedly, different nations. If all descend to earth and decide to live in Sydney, they are going to live harmoniously, 100%. No difference between Moses, Jesus, Prophet Muhammad, Lut, Abraham, you name them, all would live, would live uh, uh, harmoniously together, united. Another application of Innamal Mu'minuna Ikhwa is what Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says. Inshallah, with this, I will leave you in peace. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says that, La Allah, please pay attention to the wording of the hadith. Look at the great responsibility it brings upon us. La Allah, la yakunul mu'minu mu'minan. I swear to God, a so-called believer is not going to be a believer hatta yakuna la'akhi until his relation with his Muslim brethren brothers and sisters, no matter where in the world they live. Not, I'm not just talking about Elwood community, IHA community, Sydney community. No matter where in the world they live, the relation with them should be the relation of jasad wahid. The Imam says, jasad, like one body. One vein is cut, is bleeding. One vein now in Lebanon, in Beirut, is bleeding. Hundreds of homes and businesses were destroyed. Hundreds of innocent lives were lost. There's a big disaster. But I live here in Sydney comfortably. Why should I care? Or I only send my condolences. Or watch some videos and, and the khalas. No. Imam says that your relation should be like the relation of one body, that one limb is bleeding, the rest of the body is also on rest. The rest of the body is, is not comfortable and tries to support and to help. As celebrators of Eid al-Ghadir worldwide, Muslim community has an obligation now. According to the words of the Prophet, according to Surah al fujurat ayah number 10, إِخْوَةٌ To treat each other as siblings, no matter where in the world they live. Imagine that if you, God forbid, had heard that one of your siblings in that incident had lost his wife and left some orphans behind. 
and the house was completely damaged, how would you be uncomfortable? How would you try your very best to send them funds? That is inshallah. And alhamdulillah, it's happening. To my knowledge, alhamdulillah, Islamic centers, IHEC, Imam Hassan Center, Wish Foundation, uh, Welfare Aid International and others, they are making a combined and, and joint uh, effort, inshallah, to assist with the assistance of you brothers and sisters, members of the community. If you now agree with me, and if you want to be part of the community, that Sahib al Asr wa Zaman, inshallah, will be pleased with us and see us as a united and uniting community wherever you are sitting, please put your fingers, click your fingers together. We used to shake hand, now because of the social distances, we cannot. But it's not about the physical shaking and clicking hands together, it's about the mind. Click your hands together, inshallah, and repeat after me this contract of fraternity. If you are ready, please say salawat and hold your shaking your own hands. It's okay, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. I promise you that inshallah you will be in my humble dua, and inshallah I hope that you remember me to pray for me as well. Wa khaytuka fillah. Those who can hear me loud and clear, please repeat after me as much as you can understand. Wa khaytuka fillah. That means I made myself your brother or sister in Islam for the sake of God. Wa safaytuka fillah. That means I sincerely, I'm sincere to you as a brother or sister for the sake of God. And I am shaking hand with you in my mind for the sake of God. That I promise Allah, I promise angels of God, I promise the books of God, I promise the messengers of God, I promise my Imams, such a strong covenant, be careful. Allah and me, I promise that should in kuntu min ahl al jannah, if I'm inshallah by the bless of God, going to be one of the people of paradise. And I was given the right and the privilege to intercede. Permission was given to me to enter paradise. I will not enter it unless you are also with me. What a beautiful. Do you see the, the spirit of this fraternity it makes? I will not enter unless you come with me. Now, if you agree, and inshallah, I agree, we all say for each other, Qabel to. Mashallah, congratulations. This is a different Qabel to. I agreed. Now, after this, it is recommended to say, Asqatu anka. Yani, I forfeited upon you. Jami ahuqoq al ukhuwa. All the hundred or plus rights that I would have upon you, I forfeited all of them except three. Ma khala, yani except. Ma khala, as shafa'a, wad dua, wad ziyara. Except intercession, that I intercede you if I can, you intercede me if you can. Wad dua, pray for you, you pray for me, wad ziyara. Don't deprive me of your messages and your beautiful faces as much as possible. Wa kullu amin, wa antum ba alf khair, sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammadin ba ala aswatikum. Sheikh Mansour will now uh, give a special presentation. 
please invite this with a salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Yes, we have a surprise for the one who beautifully recited the sermon of the Holy Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Haj Ali, can you please come to the stage or somewhere that I can see you? Your friends, your brothers and sisters in Islam and Iman, they decided to surprise you and give you a gift. With all respect to everyone else, obviously it's not only Haj Ali, but definitely I testify again, and inshallah you accept my, tes my testimony, that Haj Ali for the, se for the last several years, in fact, since I remember Haj Ali used to be a teenager or, or a very, very young man. Still he's young, but when he was much younger than this, mashallah, dedication, contribution to the center, especially for the last several months during this time of this COVID-19, subhanallah, really so much dedication. dedication. Haj Ali, uh, uh, I really take my imam for you. If I could, I would put it on your head. As, I'm, I, as I said it, wearing the imam is not just by by knowledge is the practice that at the end of the day matters. Jazakallah khaira, mashallah, a gift, a very precious gift because it's the Holy Quran has come to us. If I may ask Hajali to open it and have a look at it. Subhanallah, that's how it was handed over to us. God designed it, Hajali. It wasn't the, des the, uh, the design of Ayhek. That subhanallah, it just came like this with Haj Ali on it. If you like to show them so that they can see it, mashallah, see? If you can read Hajali at the end, so that it's exclusively, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, include the intercession, include you with the intercession of the Holy Quran and keep you with the Quran in dunya wal akhara, inshallah. Jazakallah khaira. Thank you, Haj. You don't have your voice. You're muted. It's muted, please unmute it.
not me. Good, good. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajah. Any knuckies? One, two. It's a long shot, but any knuckies? It's good, it's good, go on. What do you mean it's a long shot? That there's no, you're looking for knuckie? Yeah. Does Muhammad Naki qualify? I've never met a Naki before. Hajj Naki, it's right there, right in front of you. Come on. I apologize, Hajj. All right, now we're just setting up the Kahoot. So if anyone wants to participate, they just get their phone out, go onto the website, and Hajj Ali will put the code up if you would like to participate. Salam ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Okay, so just give me a minute and we'll get the code up onto the screen, yeah? We have a few more. If your name is Musa or Kavim or Musa al Kavim or any variation to that. Beautiful. Wonderful names. <laughs> 